Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome back to my channel. But if you are new and you are looking for a warm, welcoming, helpful community, you are in the right place. Today we are at my 55 gallon uh, barrel bin, blue, and today we're going to do a bit of a harvest of the castings and then we are going to go through the entire pattern of how the wedge system works. Okay, first things first, I took out some of the, the castings out of my red wigglers and put them on the top here for blue to dry them out. So that has been occurring. And with it being furnace weather, uh, it got a little bit dry on top. So luckily the worms dive down pretty deep and manage to uh, find some place to live even when it's too dry. That's one of the benefits of having a bin that is about a foot deep. Now blue is, I'll put the measurements outside, but basically five feet long, a foot deep, and two feet this way. So first things first, I'm going to get my sifter. And if you're interested in getting a sifter like this, I do have links in the Amazon links below in the description of the video. I've been using these for over five years and uh, none of them have ever broken. I use them not only for worm castings, but also for bonsai soil and outside sand and compost when I need it to be very fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these overs here and we're going to throw that down to the business end of blue so that they can get recycled. And I just take about a handful, a big handful at a time and do this. Any more than that and the sifter really doesn't work very well. Because I know I have worms up here close to the top because I did put that tray from the Red Wigglers on here. I'm not going to be scrubbing on it like I normally do because I do know that there's worms. Worms do not like being scrubbed. So I will not get quite exactly as much of a harvest as I normally would when I can kind of scratch it, but that's okay. Um, it's winter here where I am, or it's getting towards winter here where I am. And I don't need the castings, or at least not that much in the way of castings, at least for another month or two when I start most of my seeds. Um, let's see, if you guys are in Australia or someplace in the Southern Hemisphere, um, of course you would want to try and get as much as possible because you're probably in summer now, already full into tomato and pepper season and I am jealous but I will probably be starting my hot pepper seeds here in probably less than a month. Here where I live, because it doesn't get hot consistently, I have to make up the difference by growing them for a longer period of time and then also overwintering peppers. Let's see, so I'm gonna take this tray and I'm gonna put this in the container that they stay in over the winter. I make sure that that container has enough moisture and also just a little worm chow or a little bit of food in case the worms hatch or a little worm makes it through. We want them to continue living their best life even if they're in the casting storage. And then usually before I use them, I actually will put like a little bait station in there I have a whole video about that that I can link up above here. But essentially what I do is I just take a, a small Tupperware or something similar, yogurt container, poke holes in it, put some food and bedding in the middle, and all the little baby worms just go live in that nice high density of food and moisture. And they get out of the castings and that way I don't lose any going outside to the garden. Generally, when I do a harvest like this, I will get about a gallon, four liters, give or take, of the uh, finished castings. It won't be quite that good, simply because I'm not breaking up every one of these clumps for fear of hurting any of the worms. And since it's not super dry, I don't need to take this and put it in a bucket with some water to hydrate it again which I will do. If I have castings that are super hard and crispy like this, uh, 
Um, I will actually take them and put them in a bucket of water and let them get re-moistened before I add it back to the worm bin because otherwise um, it, it will never be able to suck up enough moisture again on its own. So that's just one of those tips that I have for, you know, when you make mistakes, and we all make mistakes. Probably get at least one more of these. And then I can show you how I move everything over. Some of these little blue things are paper that has got some wax on it or something that takes a little bit longer, uh, like a, a soda container or that uh, the cardboard. It's not really plastic, it's just got a wax covering on it uh, to help with moisture, you know, condensation if it's been in a refrigerator. So that does take a little bit longer for the worms to get through that. And if it does turn out that it's a little bit of plastic, plasticized paper, I can pick that out later. Uh, as it turns out, the worms actually kind of move the stuff that's not edible out of their way. If you hear any squeaking in the background, it is my puppy dogs. I don't have them down here with me with Blue, and they can hear my voice, and they're having a fit because they feel like they are due to be wherever I am. I think I can actually get a whole nother one out of this. If this was just the castings from Blue, I might not get that much, but with it being leftovers from the Red Wigglers, I think that's where I'm getting all this extra. I harvest Blue about every other month and keep forgetting my pliers. I need to remember to bring the pliers before I come down here to break up those pits. But uh, for this bin style, it's not for the impatient. Basically what I'm doing right now is making room so that I can shove everything over. Uh, I always feed on the right hand side and I'm always pushing things that are more complete to the left. If you wanted to run it left or right, you totally can. Um, this is just what makes more sense for me. Or maybe it's because I'm left-handed, I don't know. But yeah, the idea of the, the wedge system is to get, have an area where the castings are almost finished so that they have, a to, they have time to dry and then also cure. And then you're kind of leaving the whole thing undisturbed for long periods of time, which gives the, wor the worms time to move to the, the business end where there's better moisture and better food. Getting one of these started in the first place, however, is very time consuming. It takes you about four to five months to fill the whole thing, and then another month or two before you can harvest. So whenever your winter is, or whenever you're not going to need castings, that would be the best time to start one of these types of bins, because you don't want to start a bin that takes so long to get to harvest. Obviously, you know, when you need your castings. All right, I'm gonna call it good. We probably got closer to eight liters or two gallons. So what we're gonna do here is slowly take, I don't know if you can see this tape here. I have tape. This is what I consider to be from the tape over completely finished castings. And then from here to here is, you know, kind of finishing up. And then from here over is the newly fed areas that have been fed within the last month or two. So what I'm going to do is we're going to just move all of this over so that it has a chance to dry out and the worms get a chance to move over. And as I do this, I pick any large particles out. So if I find, you know, peach pits or, or anything like that, then I am just going to keep moving this over. That way, when I sift, there's not as much to pull out. Now, this will dry down and still shrink up on me, which is how we're able to continuously move things over. 
Also, trying to get some air in here, making sure that if there is any food in here, um, that it gets a chance to get some air to it so that it doesn't become anaerobic. And then additionally, I'm trying to get the moisture to be homogenous here. The idea is that if it's all the same, then I can get it and sift it. Okay. Now, if you were watching last week, I was doing the European night crawlers and I combined two bins into one. So next time we work on that bin, we're going to have some, some a little bit, probably a little bit of drama because it is over full. But this one here, it is big enough to manage quite a bit, which is why I use it as my alternate drying place for my other bins that don't have enough room. So as we're getting to this part, you're starting to see that it is a little bit wetter. It's also got more recognizable food in here and more worms. Not a lot of worms, but still more than we just saw a minute ago. So we're just going to keep piling that up over here, moving anything undigested over. And then we keep going towards the middle here. Now we're starting to see way more worms. And it's not muddy at this point, but that also is probably due to the fact that it's, it's furnace season here. And the bins do run drier. I have to work much harder to get them to stay a comfortable moisture for the worms. I'll start using coverings. I have uh, plastic um, lids and stuff that I use to cover the worms so that the moisture doesn't leave in between feedings. I feed this bin about every three to four weeks. Um, just, you know, uh, Somebody's asked me the other day, do you have to wait that long? Can you just feed them less amounts more often? Absolutely. You totally can. The important part is that when you do feed, that you're giving the rooms, the worms, some place to escape to, should it start to hot compost and off gas ammonia or something. So if you just had a smaller bin and you wanted to feed in the corners every week, you just need to make sure that the food stays you know, equalized so the worms don't get damaged. If that doesn't make sense, put a comment below and ask me, what on earth are you talking about? Okay, so now that we've made it to the halfway mark, we're gonna start seeing a lot of worms now. There's probably almost 20 pounds in this bin, and they are going to be concentrated in this last half. And as we get closer to the far end, we're going to be seeing more and more and more. And if it's our lucky day, then we might even get to see a worm ball where they're all hanging out together in a feeding frenzy. Somebody was also asking about um, when the worms all ball up, is that good or bad? And how do you know? Well, in the case of if you're having a change in weather or you're new to vermicomposting, it is possible that balled up worms is a bad thing. Uh, because they're trying to escape something. But in a very, very mature system like this that is years old, when the worms are balling up, it is generally because they have found something very nice to eat and they're all hanging out in the same place, taking advantage of it. All right, let me move you down to the bottom half of the bin. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start seeing tomato skins, lots and lots of those. It's one of the primary things that I grow in my garden, tomatoes and peppers. I do love salsa and spaghetti sauce and stuff like that. And that, you know, is why I grow what I do grow. Uh, put in the comments below, you know, how does what your family likes to eat impact what you grow in your garden? Because I know that is, you know, one of the primary reasons that I have worms is so that they can make castings and I can increase the biology and the nutrients in the soil in my garden. Okay, we're getting there. Now I can just feel the texture of this is completely different than it was, you know, just that much farther ago. It feels a little grainy. Um, you can tell there's 
food that's not been completely digested by the worm and their friends. And you definitely can see more worms, more peelings like potato peel here, avocado shell. Those type of things take six months to completely disappear, which is why this kind of bin does require patience. If you're wondering what this plastic bag is, it's plugging a hole. And I swear this winter I am going to get something to patch that hole other than just leaving a bag in there. Okay, so now we're getting all the way to the end here where I fed last time. Also where I put all of the leftovers from sifting. So we'll see what we've got here so far. No worm ball. I'm not sure what I fed last time. I'll have to look that up. This looks like paper. I must have put some packing paper in here. Sometimes I don't shred everything and it ends up sticking together and not getting digested very well. Here we go. A little bit of a worm ball that I dis disrupted here. I was putting a lot of the uh, canning leftovers, so everything that goes through the uh, food mill ends up being worm food. It also ends up being a source of uh, seeds that uh, germinate in my, my bin here. But that's totally okay. If the seeds germinate, then I just uh, pull them up. Ooh, big worm ball, here we go. Yes. So inside of a lime and an onion. So here, let's have a short talk about forbidden foods. Those worms would not be in this food if it was harmful to them. They have lots of other options and they choose to be in this lime and in that onion. So although the Worbin legends tell you, you have to keep these away from your worms, I have successfully been feeding these to my worms for years because I didn't know any better. And by the time I read enough books that told me I wasn't supposed to do it, I thought, you know, it's possible that they also believed a Worbin legend and, you know, basically have been doing things that aren't necessary. I mean, your worms don't need to eat onions and tomatoes and limes, but it won't hurt them either. So there we go. We got all of our leftovers from last time. I'm going to put the big leftovers at the end here so it has the, the most food the worms can work on. This bin does not have any holes on purpose. Um, no drainage holes, that is. It just slopes in this direction. And that is... I just manage the moisture in this bin by feeding the appropriate percentage of moisture of bedding and food. So if I know I'm feeding a lot of really wet food, I am just going to put in drier bedding and vice versa. So here we are. We've got all of our big leftovers down here. I'm going to go get some bedding and some food and then we can get these guys set up. Okay, I've got about two gallons of shredded cardboard and paper here. Uh, if you want to know what kind of shredder I use to shred Amazon boxes, I also have that link down below. So, not completely wet, actually kind of dry. Got that down there because I do have some pretty wet food to feed them. So, we got tomatoes, green tomatoes, uh, pineapple, avocados, onions, tea bags. And in case you're wondering, yeah, the little staples, um, they aren't compostable. As far as I can tell, I'm not sponsored by Lipton or anything, but everything goes away, even the string, except for the staples, which come out when I sift. 
All right, let's get them a little bit of dry food. For those of you who have been here for a really long time, you will remember Aunt Cece and how she used to uh, give me her pantry stuff. I found a bucket from her that uh, I had never used and it's wheat and crackers and it looks like some coffee beans, maybe even some rice. So we're gonna give them a couple handfuls of that. I don't want it to heat up, so I'm just gonna put a very thin layer on there. So yeah, there is coffee beans in here. We'll see how that goes. Never fed coffee beans before. So then we're gonna top that up with the rest of the bedding here. And then I'm gonna backfill a little bit with the casting so that all the microbes and whatnot get into there so that we can have mostly finished food by the time we come back again. So that is the wedge system. I have a whole playlist that you can watch from the beginning over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.